assalamu alaikum everyone and this is the part 2 of lecture 1 or session 1 which is the introduction to the drama and particularly uh, the focus on, is on uh, the drama by the early greeks and the early medieval periods so in the first part we discussed uh, how greeks and egyptians and roman contributed to the drama western drama and uh, theater evolved and things changed uh, theories have been defined in the upcoming lecture we'll talk about aristotle's poetics and uh, plato's opinion on drama and poetry so before we move, move on so in in session 1 we have this lecture in which we talked about we are going to talk about medieval period uh, medieval period is a kind of uh, an interesting period for uh, the development of the drama Uh, because uh, a medieval drama has its own conventions, uh, may some are, some of them are followed by Greeks and Romans, but some of them are new to the audience. And uh, since the Europe was sinking into dark ages, it was very difficult for many people to step out and to contribute towards the literary genres. However, we can see the first thing: the use of common language. The first thing uh, that we can found in medieval drama is the use of a common language. the early english and the mixture of latin greek and other languages as well uh, there they, there are two stages uh, which one of them is fixed stage and one of them is movable then we have spectacles uh, the costumes music and special effects so uh, you can see from the picture Okay, next we'll be moving on. Now the time management and farce. Farce is one of the types of comedy that uh, we find in first time in the uh, medieval drama, which is more based on facial expressions and uh, movement of the body of the actors. Visual aspect and music. Music has always been there. The medieval drama was, for the most part, very religious and moral. And its theme, staging, and the tradition, and one of the most famous morality. famous morality plays perhaps best known for medieval drama is every man g so one of the examples that i will share with you and then i will discuss in detail uh, about the medieval drama Okay, music. Medieval music was both sacred and secular, and uh, so it means it is a mixture of uh, sacred music and uh, the the uh, monasteries, the churches were used. The uh, uh, the church singers were also using different instruments behind the drama. They can be used for them. So you can see that. singing without musical instruments are come uh, was a special part of the church services so 5th century to 15th century so for 1000 years we can see the medieval play rights uh, and their contribution we can, we know that uh, the basic english started in 1000 in the 11th century and then uh, the greatest contribution is made after 300 years hartwista the 10th century german secular canonist as well as the dramatist poet who lived and worked in abbey of grantsham so we have dramas from german side several of her plays drew on a so called apocryphal gospel so they were inspired by gospel most well known work is her version of the tenants comedies 
So she followed the Terence County St. Hildurinch of Benjamin, a German play, uh, playwright and writer and philosopher. Her famous work was Ordo Virtutum. Then we have uh, Adam D. La Halle, French born. So you can see that uh, in the early medieval period, Yes, you can, obviously you can see that uh, he wrote, uh, they are French and German dramatists who are writing for. Elements of the play. So this is the most interesting part that how medieval play were performed. If you remember that in Greek plays, we had uh, mass, uh, chorus, characters, music, settings. They were the major things and dialogues. But now you can find that in medieval play, there must have been a messenger, uh, the, the prophet seen as uh, actor playing prophet, God, death, every man, fellowship, kindred, cousins, goods, good deeds, knowledge, confession, beauty, strength. So these are the themes and characteristics that we find out. Desertion, five wits, angel and doctor. The more common theme, live for tomorrow, the receptive appearance of Zen, material versus spiritual gain, God's mercy and final judgment. If I sum it up, then I would say that they are the parts of, uh, you know, uh, they are kind of in interesting parts of uh, morality plays and uh, miracle plays. You can see and read the diction here and the dialogues. Okay, so uh, the rhyme scheme of the drama is more like poetic. And you can see that the different rhyme schemes have been followed even in dialogues. So these are my references. Let's move on to another part of this play. Yeah, here we go. So there are general features of medieval drama. Medieval drama flourished in 15th century and developed out of liturgical ceremonies. The origin of medieval play can be found in the church and its rituals. If you remember in the earlier lecture, we talked about liturgical plays, the five types of plays, okay, in which people are asked, instructions are given, how to talk and culture is displayed, uh, the religious culture. At the first, the church had a control on drama, even outside of the church, they would give approval. But secular groups like trade girls took over and they were called confraternities. Why they were called confraternities? Because they were confronting, they were pagans, they were uh, tributing their own gods. And it was common. Yeah, it was common. Yes, it was common that certain guild would retain control over the certain plays and stories for her, which based on the Bible or the religious teaching. So it's not only that they were all secular. After the music was introduced into churches, 6th and 3, the words were left, left later fitted into the melodies and dramatic dialogues began to take place. In the form of an alternation of, ch of chants between the priest and the choir, later processional and scenic effects were added which increased dramatic action. Liturgical drama evolved into miracle and mystery plays, 
uh, which are we have already talked about that by biblical stories saint stories were there and mystery plays were also there they were from bible and then morality right and wrong plays okay first of all we are going to have a look at look at this morality plays and mystery plays so morality plays mystery and miracle plays and then farce morality plays is sprung up in order to teach audience a lesson these plays depicted the struggle of a man good versus evil uh, we have to discuss vices virtue versus vice vices such as greed pride and vanity were prophetized uh, along with the wholesome traits such as patience goodwill and honesty they were the major dramas in which people were talked about uh, people were asked to be uh, what goodness is and uh, there has been a discussion on uh, in the modern era that the goodness defined in earlier times is really the goodness like is it really important for man to be honest in all situation the goodwill is it more important or individual need desires are important after second pride and then patience yes do we need to be patient in all situations but at that time they were considered as the traits uh, from the god and these patience goodwill and honesty were owned by prophets so these prophets must be followed followed by common people the character were placed in a situation that they tested their courage and ability to overcome the evil so even you know people were given greed uh, their the greed is tested their lust is tested their being uh, potential of being evil is tested one of the best known morality plays is called every man first appearing in the late 15th century so you can find out that that these medieval plays and plays continue during the time of chaucer and post chaucerian era mystery and miracle plays yes so as you can see that mystery and miracle plays came about as a way to reenact christian events such as christmas and easter okay they were yes your uh, ma many students believe that these christians uh, traditions came from these plays yes you are right that the modern celebration that we see the play had uh, ancient plays have uh, a lot of you know uh, similarities to this and uh, even uh, they were celebrations christian celebration driven by uh, different religious norms they were there these performances maintain christian themes and showed a struggle between man and devil based around the miracles and creation of the stories involving Jesus Christ so what is the difference between morality plays and mystery and miracle plays in mystery and miracle plays the center uh, figure is Jesus Christ christianity the uh, the sacrifice sacrificial on the other hand morality plays people are being talked about Uh, i would like you to keep reading it with me so that i could i i, I would be in a position to explain now the play utilized extensive props and became part of a cycle that took place in several installment for the town people of well now you could see that uh, sometimes necessity uh, you know is the mother of invention sometimes invention is the mother of necessity so at that time yes at that time obviously it was it, it was a time for experimentation so things were being experimented but they were very careful about it what they were doing so uh now comes the most important one which is still being discussed talked about 
but however uh, highly controversial during that time even at certain stage the farce plays had to be stopped uh, because of certain obscenity issues originally the farce plays were developed as a short breaks between the acts of the heavy morality and mystery and miracle plays and they were meant to give audience a moment of relaxation so they were the comedies they were small comedies yeah they were the small comedies that that they they used to you know be for the purpose of the entertainment however it's it's important for them not to be against going against religious norms the commandments they were there uh, so these farce uh, uh, plays were uh, hailed and they were liked by people in in fact uh, uh, according to some uh, historical handbooks of the medieval it was believed that the audience started only enjoying these parts and they were leaving morality and more mystery plays these fast skits were known best for their crudeness of jokes regarding sex and various states of digestion so this is uh, this is something because in morality and moral plays their language were refined they were highly censored uh, carefully taken up by people how so ever uh, you know uh, things were not as uh, you know uh, comfortable or as moral as acceptable as in uh, you know as acceptable for a family uh, as in uh, they should have been in more morality plays in the farce so these jokes were taken and uh, they, they were small jokes performances on the jokes and sometimes the act was so obscene that the the family couldn't bear that the fast plays became popular and moved away from the church in debuting its own form of amusement so i told you that the church were not able to grasp it and finally they had to be taken away from there one of the best known for uh, plays at that time fast of master sperry patlin by patlin comedy is still uh, you can see that charles Chap charlie chaplin comedies so they followed perry patlin comedies okay the structure of the plays the plays uh, the miracles uh, grew in popularity so the plays left the church to be performed first in the churchyard and then in other open spaces in yeah. town okay each play was repeated several times in different parts of the town with the help of uh, pageant a carriage in the form of small house with two vertical rooms in the lower room actors prepared themselves in upper and one uh, okay it, uh, if you remember in the last lecture i showed you that the carriage the lower part there were two rooms and the lower part was for the actors to stay in and the upper stages to be performed so they were taken away they were moving around here and there and they were being performed so the language you can read first the language then i'll discuss okay common people didn't understand latin not nor read it so it ignited the interest in faith in losing the paganism and the church began incorporating its liturgy into the plays the earliest example of the four line dramatization of the resurrection of the research uh, the, the, the jesus christ it was called the three marys the practice that uh, this practice then blossomed into many skits dealing with biblical themes however most plays stayed in latin till approximately 12th century i if you remember i told you that 1066 and then 1170s for the time when it it was amended so the common people uh, had a problem with uh, 
Latin, but church wanted them to learn Latin. However, there was a good mixture going on. Okay, so common people did not understand, so the language was the issue. And now you can see the audio. The cycle of the mystery plays are upheld through all social classes from royalty to peasants. They all came in to watch plays, cycles instilled in love of drama, the play. Moralities were intended for more learned people with some cultural background. So uh, even the Yeah, even at that time, the dramas were uh, obviously, you know, they were for they were meant to entertain people, they were meant to be teaching the people. But the problem was that the learned people, the, uh, you know, the people with certain social cultural background, social background and education could understand the drama. And uh, one of the reasons was its language as well. And the topic they chose, uh, however, they, their target was to achieve with the common people. Medieval stages. There were two main areas performance took place, mansions and plateia. Okay, uh, mansions, these were the small scenic structures that indicated the location of the, the, the church usually served as a mansion. The choir loft cloud served in the heaven, uh, whereas uh, the altar could, could have been the tomb of the church. So you can see that in front of the church or in the porch of the church, these these mansions were set and they were the you know mansions with the attic or with the uh, sort of uh, terrace small terrace platea that was the the general acting area adjacent to the mansion eventually dramas were moved outdoors probably because of the expanding needs of the play so the church had a lot of you know problems with these spaces and uh, since they were highly decorated they didn't want their decoration to get wasted as well, they were the ma majorly they were Catholic church. So uh, finally they, they uh, moved to Platinum. Now you can see that.
Okay, here we go. The authors and work. Most authors of the medieval plays were anonymous. Some important ones are, uh, as we've discussed, Horvista, the, the Girl, the Lady, the Bandit, Bandit Time Nun, John Bell, the English Churchman, Adam de la Halle, the French composers. So most of them were poets. They were from church and it's their history. They were, uh, she was from Germany. She used to write plays for, uh, inspired by Terence, the comedy, sarcastic plays. Okay, and then we have John Bell. John Bell was an English churchman, historian and controversialist. Uh, the Bishop of Austria, he wrote the oldest known historical verse drama in English, subject of King John. So they were from all 15th and 16th centuries this place. France died in, yes, Adam de Lala, he was a friend, died in Naples. In Italy, he was a musician and poet in the court. These are the references that you can use for play. Thank you so very much.